Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter on Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. We're right now going through a series called Obsessed with Sex. And because it's such such an obsession in the world, and people don't know, how did we get this way? How did it happen? This one is number nine. Now, someone's going to say, well, how many will there be? Well, my answer is, when we finish, we'll be done. So we'll just have to find out how many there will be because God created us to be sexual creatures, to give love, to receive love, but most of all, to receive love from him through his spirit, to receive blessings from him through obedience to him, and to give love in marriage the way that God intended it to be for a blessing. But today, because we don't, we're cursed. How did that happen? And how does it affect so many millions of people? And when you get down into the real nitty-gritty of your own life and every other human being's own life, it comes down to a matter of sex. Everything else is in addition to it. How did we get here? How did we end up with a country that started out with God, in league with God, and all the leaders followed the biblical principles that were here in establishing the civil government? And now God is removed from the Supreme Court, not quite entirely, but he is removed from government, from Congress, and especially in the administration in the White House. Self-evident. God has been removed from our state government, from our civil government, from our county government, from our city government. God has been removed from our schools, from our conversation, from television, from radio, from all means of communication, all means of entertainment. God is blasphemed, cursing, swearing, illicit sex everywhere. All obsessed with sex. How does a nation or empire come to that point? And we look down through history. And it's been repeated and repeated and repeated with every known major power or empire that has ever been established. Their downfall is eliminating God, having wrong gods, idolatry, and rampant perverted sex. How did it get that way? Well, it didn't start out that way. Adam and Eve, as we saw, knew God, but they decided we will decide good and evil. No, no, we we don't want to listen to God telling us what is good and evil. And Satan, the devil, was right there. Yeah, right on. You know, you have the power to decide good and evil. And they believed him and rejected the true God and accepted him as God, God of this world. That's why the kingdom of God is the only solution to all the world's problems, and Christ is going to return in power and glory. And this world is never, ever, ever going to forget that event. But right now, in this nation and in the world, we see the world in a vortex of sin and sex, tearing it down. So let's see how this came about. Go to Romans 1 in verse 18. Indeed, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven upon all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. That's exactly what happens when they have a complete extreme separation of church and state. God 
is removed. And God is the one who gave the blessings. So if God is removed, the blessings are removed, and what automatically takes place? Cursings. Just like the law of gravity. Just like we saw on the last video cast. God judges every nation and every individual by his laws that have been set in motion, and they operate just like the laws of gravity. Now, there was a time right at the beginning with Adam and Eve, and then again after the flood with Noah, and then in different periods down through history. But you see, history is a cycle. Like King Solomon wrote, all is vanity. That which has been is what is now, and that what is now is that which shall be in the future. So history repeats itself. Now we are seeing the rise of the Orient and the fall of Western civilization because of sin. And the Orient and all those nations east of Palestine we are going to see are going to be the rod of God's correction against us. Why? Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest among them, for God has manifested it to them. They knew, and God sent his word. And they understood, and they realized. But you go to any school in America today, or in Europe, or any Western civilization nation, and you try and find in the secular, satanic, government schools, the mention of God. Can't find it. What kind of kids are being produced? Let's go on. For the invisible things of him are perceived from the creation of the world. That's why we are to know that God created the world. That's why God commanded the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We have six days to do our work. And the reason we keep the seventh day is because God created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested. Now, that's the heaven around the earth. The rest of the universe he created way before that. So when people reject the seventh day weekly Sabbath, which is Saturday, and substitute it for Sunday, they set up the process of the beginning of the elimination of God and room for the evolutionists to come in and the God-haters to come in and to set up their kind of society and to set up a sexuality that is contrary to the Word of God. Let's see that being understood by the things that were made, both as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, what I want you to do is you go on National Geographic Channel or the History Channel, or maybe you can buy the DVDs, or maybe you already have them, and look at the fantastic things they have understood concerning the universe, concerning how the world has been made, concerning the land, the sea, the air, the animals, and every creation that there is, and even going down 10,000 feet to the depths of the ocean, and there is life down there as well. God created it. And they're all foolish to say, oh, it all evolved. No, it didn't. God says, they're without excuse they know better. This world did not just happen. God created it. And he wants us to remember it by keeping his Sabbath. Oh, but the church changed it to Sunday. Well, remember, no man has the power to change the law of God. Remember that. Let's go on. Because when they knew God, and they did at the beginning, and they did after the flood, and down through time, different peoples, especially the people of the 12 tribes of Israel, have known God from time to time. They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their own reasonings, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Isn't that amazing? Automatic. 
And you don't believe God, you don't obey God, you're left to your own opinions and your own devices, and evil human nature takes over and you choose sin instead of righteousness. Yes. Verse 22, while professing themselves to be the wise ones, they became fools. What does God say about the one who says in his heart, there is no God? He says he's a fool. Fool is said in his heart, there is no God. And you know, that was deliberate. Deliberate in every instance down through history at all times. Now, the stage was set. If you follow along any of the instructions that Glenn Beck has been doing on his video program, showing what he calls the progressives, well, that's really the wrong name. They are Satanists. They want to get rid of God. Now, you have to come back to God completely, not halfway. You can't have God the way that the religions of Christianity today say that it is, because they have most of it wrong. And they are the fundamental problem as to how this came about. Now, there's a man who's called Aldous Huxley, and he is a prime mover and shaker in helping to establish the UN and to bring about a secular philosophy that eliminates God. And let's see what he says from his own words. Let's see what kind of society that he wants. And let's see the motive for doing it. It's exactly in accord with what we have just read in Romans, the first chapter. Now, this is going to be something. This is going to be dumbfounding to you. And this is from his book, Ends and Means, published in 1937. And isn't that when this philosophy called progressivism really started to branch out again after it began right after the turn of the century, as the 20th century began? Yes. And there are various stages where it came to the full. In the 1960s, it was 1969 with Woodstock, free sex, and drugs. That's the generation that we have today. But the stage was set by those like Aldous Huxley. I'm going to read to you from his book, Reasons and Motives for Denial of a Special Creation of Everything for Explanations of Creation Without a Divine Creator. That's what we're just reading here, see? So he's going to say, we'll explain to you how the world came to be through evolution. But that's not the whole story. The whole story is we bring in a sexual revolution. And we bring in morality. Because, you see, these Satanists, which is what they are, if you preach these kind of doctrines, are following Satan's way because Satan knows if you get people involved in ungodly sex and perversions, they're not able to think. They become people without true emotions of love and understanding. Destroys the family. And what that does, it destroys emotions, it destroys minds, it destroys the society, and creates, as one man wrote, an empire of serfs. Well, let me continue. Quote, I had motives for not wanting the world to have any meaning, consequently assumed that it had none. An assumption. God didn't create it. God doesn't exist. There's no meaning to life. Now, how does that make you feel? 
when God created you to receive his love. And God created you as male and female to give and receive love and to help him reproduce after your kind, after his kind, for his great purpose. And you see, the Bible tells us the true purpose. But what Huxley was looking at was this. He was looking at the religion that was there and saw all the hypocrisy and all the double standards that they had, their lies, their sex lives, and said, look, how can they set the moral standard for us when they do the same thing they condemn? We'll be open about it. We don't want that moral standard. See, he made the mistake by not going to the Bible and say, well, maybe they're wrong. We ought to go to the Bible and find out what God says. So here's what he came up with. For myself, as no doubt for most of my contemporaries, the philosophy of meaninglessness was essentially an instrument of liberation from a certain system of morality. Be free. Promise them freedom while they're the slaves of sin. Think about that. The philosophy of meaninglessness. Now you know why our country and society and world are going down because we don't know God. We don't know his laws. We don't understand his commandments. And we are sinning against him in such a tremendous way that God has no alternative but to correct us. But this is the philosophy that laid the groundwork for it. Continuing now. We objected to the morality because it interfered with our sexual freedom. They wanted to have sex with whomever, however, any way that they desired, male, female, male, male, female, female, bestiality, or like some famous athletes who hire harems of women. And he was a real tiger of a man. But look at his life now. Sexual freedom. What has it led to? Well, we'll talk a little later about Sodom and Gomorrah. What did God do to leave an everlasting witness when there is perverted sex against the commandments of God? And we've already covered those. Destruction is not far away. Now continuing, we objected to the political and economic system because it was unjust. Communist spread the wealth around. There was one admirably simple method of justifying ourselves in our political and erotic revolt. They knew what they were doing. Now, the proverb says, Every way of a man is just in his own eyes, right? Even though it's totally evil and inspired with the spirit of Satan, inspired with the spirit of rebellion. This is the political system that was brought on beginning in 1937, which we have now inherited through the elite, the educated, the the philosophers, the religious leaders, the political leaders, do we not have male to male marriage among bishops in the Episcopal Church? Yes. Do we not now have an ordained female lesbian in the Episcopal Church? Yes. You can be for sure. That church has nothing to do with God. Oh, but they're not all like that. But do they keep the Ten Commandments? That's the guide, not what people think. Continuing on here. We could deny that the world has any meaning whatsoever. Similar tactics had been adopted during the 18th century and for the same reasons. The chief reason for being philosophical was that one might be free from prejudice, above all prejudice of a sexual nature. Anything goes with anyone at any time. 
Yes, go ahead, destroy your life and your emotions. We read the statistics, didn't we? 63 million Americans have active, infectious, sexually transmitted diseases today because of this. Continuing, it was the manifestly poisonous nature of the fruits that forced me to reconsider the philosophical tree on which they had grown. In other words, rejecting the truth of God. Aldous Huxley. Now let's go back to Romans, the first chapter. Let's see how this fit in. And let's see what the first penalty is that comes along when men do that. And women as well. Here's what happens. They became fools. I just read you one of the most foolish philosophical statements, but true in their rebellion against God and their rebellion against society and to mold all society in their evil ways and purposes. That's what happened to all the past civilizations. You read it. They reject God, get involved in idolatry and corruption, perversion of sex. And all the economic problems follow. That's why we're in the trouble we are in. We have those who have rejected God, who are fools, who do not know how to think, running the churches and running the governments and running the schools. Is it any wonder that we are where we are? Yes. Notice what happens. Verse 23, they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the likeness of an image of corruptible man. Oh, yes, humanism. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, man is the highest standard that there is. If he's the highest standard, why is he such a miserable failure? And why is he so full of sin and corruption? and of birds and four-footed creatures and creeping things. For this cause, notice, God is not way off somewhere. The laws of God function just like the law of gravity. Now, if you can defy the law of gravity, I defy you by the, by the power of your thought to lift yourself out of the chair and suspend yourself in the air by your own will. Can't do it, can you? No. Likewise, when you reject the laws of God, just like the law of gravity, the penalties are there and happen, and God has the power to enforce it. Notice verse 24. For this cause, God also abandoned them to uncleanness through the lust of their hearts to disgrace their own bodies between themselves. Homosexuality. Back to Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, yes, we have to have the freedom. Oh, don't condemn us. But, you know, if you do, you're a homophobe. Really? If you are so entrapped in that, are you not a heterophobe? No one asks that question, do they? Verse 25, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie. What I just read to you is a lie. And you know, there are translations that want to go in and change the word of God so much that the truth of the word of God they want to destroy that's why we have done the Holy Bible in its original order with a new faithful translation, faithful to the Hebrew, faithful to the Greek, so that when people read it, they can understand. Verse 27, and in the same manner also the men, having left the natural use of sex with women, were inflamed in their lustful passions toward one another, Men with men shamelessly committing lewd acts and receiving back in themselves a fitting penalty for their error. Isn't that what we have today? In what population of sexual active people is there the most syphilis, 
and AIDS, the male homosexual community. Now, on the other hand, show me a marriage of a man and woman that have been faithful throughout their entire lives in their marriage. Are there any venereal diseases, or as they like to call them today, STDs? No. Has there ever been? No. As long as they are faithful, they are blessed. Compare. What do you want? The blessing or the cursing? Oh, but you're speaking against homosexuality. No, I'm telling the truth. So you go to San Francisco and you look up all the health statistics and you'll find the truth. God says it would happen. We see it. Yet people are obsessed with sex. And in every major city, they have the so-called gay parades. The truth is, there's nothing gay about that way of life. So here we are. Western civilization obsessed with sex and collapsing. Politically, monetarily, sexually, morally, in every way, because we've rejected God. That's the true source of it. And you need to know that. And the world needs to know that. That's why we have church at home. Because you're not going to hear these words from any other pulpit given this way. Now, I hope that these things will help you a great deal. That you will use the opportunity of church at home to restore a relationship with God. That's why Church at Home. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. Let the Word of God be a blessing to you. Let it be something to help you and comfort you. Let it be with the Spirit of God to lead you to repentance. So until next time, be sure and visit our other website, cbcg.org. And this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone. <laughs>